<laughs> get out of my bunker. <coughs> get, get, get out of my bunker. It's okay. We, I this have is an, an urgent. This is an urgent podcast. I have Can an you N95 mask on. N95. Anything lower and you're susceptible. Get out of the bunker. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you live from the bunker. If you can't tell by the echoey sounds and the various engines we have keeping us alive, we are in the true bunker today. And the reason is because the apocalypse has arrived. Now, you all laughed at us. You all said, no way the apocalypse is going to happen. You don't need to do an apocalypse podcast. Well, joke's on you because it is here. We didn't know it was going to be the virus. We thought it was going to be the rapture or a nuclear bomb or any other zombies. zombies. Uh, But no, it's actually the super flu, the coronavirus. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have been on hiatus for the last little while because first, a large new Davidson entered the world. And then... We were busy because we knew it was coming. Yeah. Buying every single roll of toilet paper in every Walmart in the country. And ladies and gentlemen, we are now prepared for this apocalypse. We have 3,000, or 300,000, my bad, rolls per person. And that's just the two-ply. And that's just the two-ply. Uh, so, uh, if you are not aware what's going on, the coronavirus has rip- gripped us. That's why we have descended down in here into the bunker Uh, Mr. Norman, tell us about what's been going on with this virus. All right, so it started off in Wuhan, China. Um, There is still some debate as to whether it was a large government plot. See the Conspiracy Theories podcast for further information. Or if it was... uh, (laughs) Yeah. Or if it was truly just from, you know, eating food that ate other food that ate other food. But either way, the coronavirus has... Yes, in a wet market. The coronavirus has now entered the human population. Fun fact, it already was in the human population. This is a different strain, just like there's flu A and flu B every year. But... We get flu from pigs. (laughs) Or birds. Or birds. But anyway... Corona comes from bats. And cats. Meow. So, (laughs) if you eat a bat cat... (laughs) Anyway, all that to say, it then proceeded to spread throughout China, causing lockdown and chaos, um, and has then spread around the world, specifically centering now in Iran, Italy, and coming soon to a neighborhood near you. If, of course, uh, you are putting stock in what the NBA, NCAA, NHL, NHL, uh, of course, President Trump shutting down borders. Uh, I mean, everything that was crazy is shutting that down. He- completely shut off travel to Europe. <laughs> yes, travel to Europe is shut down. Ladies and gentlemen, the last 24 hours have been a wake-up call Tom for... Tom Hanks is sick. National treasure. No, not that national treasure. We're not talking not about him. Not Nick Cage. No, no, no. I mean, he is a national treasure, <laughs> not he made the movie. Um, I now want to watch National Treasure with Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks survived so we can see this movie. Well, to be fair, his son... I guess that's the, the Da Vinci Code. His... <laughs> Kind of. His son also just posted a video and said, Dad's not even really that sick. <laughs> I can see Tom Hanks being the type of person to be like, I'm going to make everybody look like a fool and pretend that I'm sick. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. we're not accusing him of that. We are not accusing him of that. Tom Hanks, come on the podcast, bring the rock. But <laughs> all of that to say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we believed this was crisis enough for us to return. So quick timeline of the last 24 hours. Yesterday... Um, As school was winding down, we began receiving rumors, in fact, uh, not just rumors, news, that the NCAA was not going to allow fans to attend the NCAA March Madness Tournament. Which would have been crazy to watch and a very interesting case study on how crowd affects higher seeds and lower seeds and momentum and all that fun stuff. Would have been incredibly exciting to see the entire tournament with just shoes squeaking. (laughs) Yeah. And then the random parent in the back. Yeah. Go, Billy. Um, but Or just as as we wanted to see one fan from each team. <laughs> yes, a single fan. Uh, shout out uh, CFB Twitter. Um, or excuse me, Reddit, Reddit CFB, CFB on, on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> um, I apologize once again for the audio quality. If you want to hear good audio quality, listen to one of our previous non-bunker podcasts. However, um, after that shutdown, the NBA later that evening announced that they would be suspending play because they don't want LeBron to get a ring. And, and that one player kept on licking knobs. Yeah, I mean, if Rudy Gobert had just kept his hands to himself, bruh. Um, but anyway, uh, if you've been guarding Rudy Gobert, Gobert in the last uh, 
probably 36 to 72 hours, please contact the CDC. And then Donovan Mitchell got diagnosed earlier today. Yes, high-fiving. Um, but anyway, all that to say, we have now arrived at the point where all things have been shut down and all things that have not yet been shut down probably will be. Universities are suspending in-person classes, and we believed it was the job, the duty, of the TDWG podcast to make sure you are aware of what is going on and how to prepare for this apocalypse apocalypse, and the next one. Yes, so this is our apocalypse podcast. We're going to provide you with some FYI on what to do whenever the streets are vacant and you hear just the rustling of a uh, plastic bag flowing through the air. Or the tumbleweeds, like the ones that consumed that dude's house like two weeks ago. Look it up, it's real. They were like 50 feet deep. So, I am an expert in this because of my experience playing the video game Fallout and reading Stephen King's The Stand, which features the super flu. And Mr. Norman is an expert in this because of the rapture. Uh, yeah, that and the fact that uh, my father is uh, a former... Edited. <laughs> and uh, so, because of that, you know, we are we are a little bit prepared. So let's go through. We're going to walk through, and then we'll come back around to the coronavirus at the end and talk through the actual preparedness steps you could take. But first, we have three other potential apocalypses that could come upon us at any time, and then we'll come back. Yes, yeah, so we talked about them at the beginning, or at least I think at the beginning of this one. I don't know. The coronavirus might be eating my brain since you infected me. Uh, <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, but you have the nuclear apocalypse in which a, an atomic bomb or a hydrogen bomb is set off and we have mass sheer destruction and everything is destroyed and whoever survives uh, is fighting for resources with the cockroaches. Yeah. And uh, the Twinkies. And the Twinkies. You have the rapture in which everybody, which God uh, pulls those who are his and like planes are crashing and all that stuff. Um, and then last but certainly not least, zombies. So, uh, we'll just go ahead and start off and go in that order. So, would you like to explain some nuclear apocalypse potentials here? What could happen if we were to go full mad with Russia? That is mutually assured destruction, for those of you who are not aware. Well, it would be like Mad Max a little bit. Uh, uh, the first thing that would happen is, of course, the power would be knocked out because of the, e the electrical magnetic pulses. So, we'd automatically lose all access to, techno to technology, like your phone you keep on tapping and trying to see if that's... Uh, still working. It's it's the I'm super flu. It's I'm the super checking. bug. It's not the atomic bomb. Never trust the Russians. That would happen. And of course, if you are in direct path of an atomic bomb, you would just be eviscerated. You would have no chance at surviving whatsoever. Uh, and the radiation that would emit from that would probably kill the most of the rest of the people uh, slowly but surely in very painfully and deadly ways. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are not here talking about a single nuclear bomb. We are talking about all, all of the of nuclear powers unloading on each other with their pre-programmed... Think uh, if... Uh, oh gosh. War Games, the movie. If War Games, the movie, was not a simulation going on. Um, so... If that were to occur, state is very few people left alive, though many of those that are left alive are barely alive, but how should we prepare for that? Well, the biggest thing is if it does happen, for one, the whole fallout thing, the fallout guy has his thumb up. If the mushroom, if your thumb can cover the mushroom cloud, you're safe enough distance away. Unless you're downwind. Unless you're downwind. Then you need to make sure that you're inside, you uh, take a shower, uh, and then after that you're pretty much done with your water there for, the for a while. You need to make sure your windows are closed, all vents are kind of taped up, so nothing else can kind of penetrate inside your house. Then, whatever you have inside your house, hopefully you've prepped, like a doomsday prepper like we have, Yes. Uh, that's what you're going to pretty much live off of for a considerable amount of time until the nuclear fallout kind of settles down, which... Uh, can be years. Yeah, and uh, the the thing that I would say is if you are going to go full prepper for this specific thing, um, all you have to do, it's very simple, is just EMP proof your entire house. Uh, you know, it, it's very basic. All it takes is probably several million dollars and <laughs> lots of various types of metal sheeting um, and grounding. But aside from that, you know, basic thing, um, you can also make sure that you are prepared by having in your house all of the foods that we know will survive a nuclear apocalypse. Twinkies? Twinkies, of course. 
Um, something else uh, that is very good is canned sardines. Um, canned sardines uh, taste nasty anyway, so you'll never be able to tell. Beans. Beans, of course. Rice. And, of course, you need all the bottled water and, pros- and probably a thing to filter your ear. Yes. Uh, I mean, we're going full Bear grills here. Um, <laughs> so you need to have a f- filtration system approximately uh, equivalent to what they have on the International Space Station installed in your basement. Mm-hmm. Um, that we have be, that. That will be very helpful. Yeah, we have it right over there. Um, that's the humming noise you actually hear. Yeah, it's, it's processing the, uh, last, <laughs> the last deposit. Um, but <laughs> the... Uh, the basics there should contain you. Um, I would also highly recommend having some very high-powered defensive weapons for when the ants become supersized due to the radiation and attempt to eat you. Yes, and keep, in, and keep in mind, most apocalyptic movies show that humans are at war with each other. Uh, the enemy is not each other. The enemy are the giant ants, folks. It is. It is. I mean... I don't. I don't think people realize how much of a threat that really is. Um, I mean, those little mandible clipper things. I mean, they are. They. They. Are, they're having a massive world war as we speak with themselves. Exactly. And now, if they become bigger than us, they're of course going to try to take us out. I. I have witnessed firsthand the frontline war between the sugar ants and the fire ants. It happened through my house when I lived in Alabama, and uh, it is violent and it is. It is uh, epic. And if it was happening with things that were, you know, nine feet tall instead of being less than a millimeter, um, it would have absolutely decimated the town that I lived in. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we hope that you are prepared for the nuclear apocalypse. That is, however, just one of many. Yes. The next one, of course, is the one that you're an area, you're yes. expert of area, uh, your area of expertise. A- area yes. of expertise. Uh, uh, the coronavirus again, remember. Uh, uh, the rapture. Yes, so uh, rapture. Now, I will say, uh, with this apocalypse, of course, the, the genu- or general uh, approximation of it that is given by things like the Left Behind series is that all at once, out of nowhere, people will vanish, their clothes will be laying there, and uh, cars will be crashing. You'll see bumper stickers that say, like, in case of rapture, this car will not be driven by a human. You know, whatever. Um, and uh, all these people things... People actually have bumper stickers? I've like seen that? it. There's a bumper sticker that says, in case of rapture, this car will be driverless. I'm pretty positive that there will be a driver in that car now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> it's a whole side note. But, yeah, so uh, if, uh, you know, these folks have not necessarily been reading a little. Um, I know. <laughs> if uh, that type of rapture were to occur, then uh, the best way to prepare is to not be left behind. However... <laughs> Because otherwise, it's all going to heck in a handbasket. Yes, literally. it'll be very crazy. Uh, in fact, it will be it'll be quite a show if you are stuck behind to watch. But the, I would recommend just try to keep up the good fight. Uh, luckily, not that like not that many people are supposed to be raptured, and so there will still be plenty of supplies and whatnot left over. It will just be very very awkward. Yeah, very awkward as you look across at the other people and you're like, dang. Um, so I'm stuck with you. Got it. <laughs> but uh, the good thing is, I will just throw this in there, is uh, these these visions of the terror of the rapture don't line up with what Scripture actually says about Christ. So if you really want to know, you know, read the Gospels and see what Jesus says about his kingdom coming, and there's a lot more love and a lot less zapping um, that happens. But anyway, that's another side note. Feel free to go and read Scripture to get the actual picture. But if it were to happen, like the Left Behind series then uh, you'd want to prepare by being prepared beforehand so you're not left behind. And then the final one, of course, is the zombie apocalypse, which might happen because of the flu, because of the coronavirus. I mean, we don't know. It could evolve. World War Z. Exactly. World War Z. Brad Pitt, he will try to save us. But in that one, the sick people survive. Yes. So actually, if you have coronavirus in his world you'll live well the zombie apocalypse is all over the place there's a lot of different types of zombie apocalypse uh you have the fast zombies you have the slow meandering zombies the walkers the yeah. walkers type of zombies and basically what you just need to do there is just wait out wait until it's cold go go as far north as you possibly can uh just camp out in alaska uh go to barren alaska and i think you'll be fine you might hang out with Sarah Palin, the masked singer star. Um, exactly. So uh, you do need to stock up on. You don't necessarily need ammo or guns or things like that. You need melee weapons if it is a zombie apocalypse. So you need to be looking at like machetes, shovels, uh, baseball bats, crowbars, uh, that piece of bread from the cafeteria. 
Yeah, I actually... Uh, b- <laughs> Not our uh, cafeteria. Yes, of course. Of course. Maude, we love you. Yes. Um, Her bread is good. I'm talking about the bread from those other cafeterias. Yeah, like Haiti. Exactly. Um, so the the other uh, thing that you can do to prepare specifically, if you have large melee weapons, is make sure that the edges are very sharp. However, they're still wide edges. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the angle of, uh, of the whatever the heck the knife blade, uh, you want it to be a very thick, kind of like a hatchet style blade, um, because it has to be able to make it through several zombies in one swing. Yes. So it's just a, just a heads up, literally. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you need to be, and work on that cleaving motion. Cleaving is whenever you take out one enemy and you move on to the enemy adjacent to you. Yeah, so be prepared. Uh, you might want to take some classes in uh, wielding large medieval weaponry. Um, that would probably be helpful. If Luckily, you, I am putting on those classes every Thursday afternoon. Yeah, uh, they only cost a at the low, low price of five thousand dollars a class. And uh, when he says five thousand dollars, it's important you understand you must pay in gold equivalent. Yes, um, because no we stocks. All, because we all know that <laughs> stocks, bonds, and the U.S. dollar will be useless uh, during the apocalypse. Or bottle caps. You can bring, you can pay me in five thousand dollars worth of bottle caps. And he's not talking about the metal. He's talking about that really nasty candy. Yes, I love that candy. Oh, I'm so glad we stocked up on that candy. Oh, gosh. I'm glad that I brought gummies. I like gummies, too. Stay with your bottle caps. <laughs> so, um, speaking of food, I would say the last thing in the zombie apocalypse, you need to be aware um, that every bit of food that you eat should have lots and lots of garlic in it. Because from what I gather, um, it makes your brains a little garlicky and the zombies are less likely to come for you. These are zombies, not... Vampires, normally. They're vampombies. Zompires. Vampa zombies. He's just shaking his head. All right, so anyway. Um, so, and one last thing about rebuilding society. Oh, yeah. Because we've gotten through all that, and we're going to talk about the coronavirus here in a second. Once the apocalypse has ebbed, and we have returned to quote-unquote status quo, rebuilding society, a couple things to keep in mind. A good crop that would uh, be one to focus on would be corn, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, very durable. It's very durable. Especially Russian corn. And you should be able to uh, grind that into a cornmeal and make a lot of different things with that with that particular cornmeal. Uh, you need to make sure you filter your water. That would be in a very important high-ranking thing. Charcoal is a very effective uh, filtering system. And then, last but not least, uh, you need to find every possible transmitting station that you can possibly find and have our podcast, every single episode of our podcast here in uh, the TDWG podcast in the Boot Hill, Missouri. There are radio stations in Crothersville. There is one, like between Crothersville and Hayti, there is one just uh, north of town ta- or in town on your way out towards the interstate. Uh, there is one on Kennett on the South Bypass. There's That's, a small one up in Mississippi County as well. The uh, one on the South Bypass, uh, 1065, that is the strongest uh, radio signal in the Boot Hill in Missouri. Uh, whenever the apocalypse, of course, happens, uh, make sure you have every single episode of our podcast downloaded onto a thumb drive. Go to those radio stations and start broadcasting out the TDWG podcast so the world can know this advice we're giving them. So they will be educated. Oh, sorry. Someone is trying to enter the bunker. I go need- attack. Go All attack. Right. Go, get, right. them. go, go get them. Go get them. I need to go uh, double check the bunker. I'll be right back. Yes. So it's actually going to be quite easy to do that. You know, of course, we have a podcast uh a website you can go to or you can just download episodes of our podcast on mp3 and yeah that should work oh okay i'm back we have been defended we are okay did you make sure you uh, informed them how to get our podcast yes okay they know how to get the podcast so you were going to tell us some actual like beneficial advice about surviving the apocalypse okay yeah so before we hit like coronavirus in the actual kind of what might happen over the next little while if you actually are wanting to be a true blue uh, doomsday prepper here, here's the real things you need to consider. Number one, food. Um, you need to have a stockpile that can keep you going in the meantime while things are apocalyptic. Uh, apocalyptic? So that, yeah, apocalyptic. <laughs> so that while the, the you know, nature is writing itself and all of that, you have enough to sustain yourself. Um, second, now this is things with that, like, 
And that was, and these are foods that we were talk, we actually kind of talked about not jokingly earlier, like rice, uh, beans, things that don't perish yes. that easily. Things that either are good as long as they stay dry, or things that are good as long as they stay relatively like canned, right? Uh, you don't want stuff that is is uh, based on refrigeration. Uh, you want stuff that is good dry. Um, then, second, uh, a lot of people talk about stockpiling like water. You know, a lot of <laughs> a lot of places have been drained of their bottled water and toilet paper for this coronavirus thing. But in reality, uh, once again, you need a short supply of water. But then, what you really need to stockpile is uh, water filtration systems. Um, and you know, we, we talked about the uh, massive filtration system we have here in the bunker. You don't actually need that. You can get um, a supply of things by like Sawyer or Life Straw um, that genuinely are not just filtration, but uh, oh gosh, now I'm having the brain fart. But the things that purifiers, actual purifiers for the water, things that make it so that if there is a virus or if there is something like that, it'll actually filter even those things out of the water. So um, that's the second thing, is, is the water. The third thing you need is something to provide some type of shelter. So that could be equipment to create a shelter or that could be uh, some form of durable shelter in and of itself. And then the last two things I'd give you are some type of way to create fire. Um, a tent. And... Uh, the a tender box. Yes, the um, there are lots of things you can get flint really steel. durable, like the yeah flint and steel. But we're not talking like a hunk of rock here, flint and steel. You can get a flint, uh, and a lot of them will even have magnesium connected to it. That you can shave the magnesium, light it, and those things will last for decades, uh, even if being used every day. Um, and then last but not least, you need something to use uh, to procure food uh, slash defend yourself. And while you could stockpile ammo. It is actually more recommended that you get something that you could use without gunpowder. So if you want to have, you know, a bow that you could make something for, things like that, that you could use. Kind of like the stuff. archery tournament that yeah. uh, we ended up, not, we're not going to end up having any more here at the school. <laughs> yeah, well, it's something like that. But we have, uh, so if you have those things, you will be well prepared. Uh, but obviously the best preparation you can do is educating yourself on how to survive without your house and car and all those nice fancy things. Um, used to be able to say join the Boy Scouts. They've kind of tailed off as of late. Um, but anyway. There's so other baggage that the Boy Scouts are currently dealing with. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's what I would say is those are the actual things if you want to become a real prepper. Um, you want to give us the final update on forecast of what has been talked about potentially happening with coronavirus? Yeah, well, let's go ahead and do that. So basically what's going to happen, it's going to get... Oh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. We're we haven't we I would say have just we're about to hit peak coronavirus, and so we're going to see more and more cases come out. Uh, and they just they just cancel they just cancel the Division One wrestling tournament for the rest. Uh, so okay, I'm not going to lie. I can see why you wouldn't want to wrestle someone with the coronavirus. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets better uh, because of how the symptoms work for the coronavirus. Uh, they are very how to put it. Uh, they're very mild symptoms from the outlook of it, and mm. they get more serious as it goes. And it's and yes, like the whole thing that they talk about, yes, the flu has technically been deadlier. That's just because the coronavirus spreads faster, and it can be deadlier once it is spread. And the people who are susceptible to the virus are probably going to not do so hot. So elderly, people with pre-existing conditions and disabilities, that's probably going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But we are approaching peak corona and the, the good thing about the united states is this uh you've heard of probably a lot of people if you are listening to this as a current podcast talk about the phrase flatten the curve um the reason they're suspending all of this stuff is because they want to keep that curve as small as possible correct that while the explosion is going they want to get as few people per hour essentially infected as possible because the only point at which the coronavirus becomes a genuine issue for all of the United States is when those people who are elderly or have pre-existing conditions outnumber the beds in hospitals. Because prior to that point, we have amazing health care in the United States. As much as we complain and whine about it, we have some of the best health care in the world. We are a first world country. <laughs> yes. And so um, as long as people have a place to go in a hospital and be treated and be hooked up to an IV and actually getting fluids and getting oxygen, they're going to be okay um, if, you know, obviously if they have serious pre-existing conditions or, or they are very elderly, that still might result in their death as it has sadly 
um, already here in the United States. But for everybody else, if you have access to that hospital bed, you're going to be okay. Um, so the point at which it crosses more people sick than there are hospital beds, and we're talking more people who are seriously ill, not like a young, healthy person who gets sick and could just stay in their house. Um, that's the point where we get bad. And we are taking a ton of precautions right now. As much as people are bashing the government, they're doing quite a bit um, yes. to to limiting prevent, yeah. limiting that tra uh, cutting off travel to Europe seems like an extreme measure, but it was a very yes. smart measure. Uh, same thing; they had already canceled; tra they had already cut off travel to Asia. Uh, them trying to get out these test kits as much as fast as possible has also been a beneficial thing. So it's. It's moving in the right direction. The United States is probably one of the better places that you could get the coronavirus in. And so that's all we're trying to do is try to keep it down as much as possible. So until then, just do basic general run-of-the-mill health stuff. You know, wash your hands. Don't touch your face, even though I'm touching my face as I say this. Yes, but we are in the bunker. So we are in okay. the bunker, so we're safe. Uh, don't, don't. There's one student that I'm thinking of. I'm not saying their name because it's against FERPA. But they know who they are, and I know you are listening. You need to respect people's personal space. <laughs> I know the student. <laughs> um, so, yeah, respect personal space. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Um, and, don't I mean. Lick nor don't lick doorknobs. Yeah, don't lick doorknobs. Don't be Rudy Gobert. Um, but uh, in reality, a vast majority of people are going to be 100% fine. Uh, at, at its worst, this thing has a death rate of about 3.5%. Which is still pretty high. It's, it's high. It's awful. It's terrible. But Considering that the flu leaves, is below 1%. <laughs> yes. But, but just meaning that that, that leaves 98%. Right? Yeah. I mean, and so I know the math was bad. Really, it's 96.5. I get it. But the... Mix 96.5. <laughs> <laughs> but the point there being, it's not probably, Lord willing, it's not going to reach that point uh, in the United States. It's, it's below two in the United States as far as death rate is concerned. So calm down. To quote uh, Franklin Roosevelt, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Well, yeah, we also have the coronavirus, I understand, but they also had the Great Depression, right? So don't freak out. Don't actually be one of the don't people who Don't sell all of your stocks. Yeah, don't, don't write it out. Now is not the time to sell stocks. If anything, it's time to buy. But... Um, Point being, chill out, calm down. It's not the zombie apocalypse. It's not nuclear war. Ride it out. Be smart. Don't go riot because you can't get the two-ply toilet paper. All right? Only riot whenever you can't get the one-ply. Then, then there is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Use pine cones. All right, but Don't. I think until next time, my name has been Paul Davidson. My name is and Lord willing will be Scott Norman. And this has been two... Dumb woke guys. <coughs> <coughs>